so welcome to all of you shiksha 360 and today basically we will discuss some of the important points and some of the important sessions sorry some of the important questions basically we can see that basically which they have asked in the early examination clear so let's start our discussion so first point which we have to discuss in our today's session what is rrf what is rrf and what is boid these two points basically rrf basically they have asked on 6th of february on 12th of february 2022 clear basically this in the year 2021 clear these two points are related to a dmat account clear in the chapter number 18 basically these two points are related to a dmat account clear so please tell if anyone remember basically what are these points so boid clear first of all basically we have to tell understand basically what is the full form of boi declare that is beneficiary honor identification number clear that is beneficiary honor identification number that is basically stands for boi declare boid that is beneficiary honor identification number that is basically stands for the boi declare so next one here what is rrf clear what is RRF clear? RRF basically stands for. This is basically regarding the chapter number 18 clear. Basically, I will discuss some of the important points clear, which they have asked in the earlier examination or basically which are important. Clear basically these are regarding the chapter number 18. So RRF basically stands for the remat request form clear, remat request form clear. RRF basically stands for the remat request form form clear and we basically we have to discuss one more thing here regarding that so what is rematerialization what is rematerialization clear so what is the meaning of rematerialization so can anyone tell basically what is the meaning of rematerialization basically rematerialization basically stands for the process of getting the securities clear rematerialization basically the process of getting the securities in an electronic form clear basically the process of getting the securities in an electronic form clear basically securities are present in an electronic form but what we have to do basically we have to convert converted back into the physical form clear basically converted back into the physical form it is basically called as rematerialization clear the process of getting the securities in an electronic form converted back into the physical form clear converted back into the physical form that is basically known to be as the rematerialization clear that point basically it is to be known as the rematerialization next some important points regarding that so can a miner can a miner open a dmat account can a miner open a DMAT account? Please tell fast what is the correct answer. Can a miner basically open a DMAT account? Yes. The miner can a DMAT account clear basically a DMAT account can be opened in the name of the miner clear a DMAT account basically can be opened in the name of the miner clear and further the account basically who will operate the account basically the account will be operated by the guardian clear account will be operated by the guardian basically up to how much time basically till the minor become major clear the account will be operated by the guardian basically till the minor becomes a major clear basically till the minor becomes a major clear so dmat account basically is to be opened by the minor further one more point regarding that can DMAT account opened in either or survivor basis. Like basically, we can open a saving account basically with the instruction either or survivor basis. Can a DMAT account basically will be opened in that form? Can a DMAT account basically will be opened in the form of either or survivor basis? Please don't write anything on the screen. 
clear can a DMAT account basically open in the either or survivor form? No. Clear DMAT account that cannot be opened in the form of either or survivor form. Clear? So please remember these basic points. Clear? Please remember these basic points. These points they have already asked the last year. Clear? Basically, these points they have already asked last year. Okay. Last time. One more point, basically, which they have asked last time. So basically, we will discuss that you are able to understand. Basically, these are some of the important points. Clear? What is I? SIN number, ISIN number, and basically it is of how many digits? It is of how many digits? Clear. First of all, basically we have to discuss what is ISIN number, and it is of how many digits? So ISIN number, clear. ISIN number basically stands for the international. Securities, ISIN number basically international securities identification number clear international securities basically identification identification number clear it is basically international securities identification number clear it is basically alpha numeric clear not basically we can say that it is a numerical basically it is alpha numeric and it is of twelve digit clear basically it is of a 12 digit clear basically it is alphanumeric and it is of 12 digit clear and further these points basically we will expect in the examination in the form of question that's why basically i will discuss out of the 12 alphanumeric digits clear out of the 12 alphanumeric digits the first two digits basically for any indian depository clear for any Depository in India, clear basically for any depository in India. The first two digits, clear the first two digits are to be IN, clear. The first two digits are to be IN, clear. For any depository in India, the first two digits of the ISIN number, clear the first two digits of the ISNI number is to be IN, clear the first two digits is to be IN, clear. So please remember these some of the basic points which you will get in the examination clear basically which you will get in the examination clear and under that clear basically there are some other important points regarding the which i have discussed tomorrow morning clear regarding the government schemes like this is also covered under the chapter number 18 but we have to discuss separately like pmjjby pmspy clear there is premium amount and how much share basically will go to the government with go to the bank and basically will go to the basically a person basically who is helping the bank clear or basically we can say that bc or basically business correspondent corporate or agent clear corporate or agent clear earlier basically this we can say that basically this premium is to basically under the pmjjby clear basically under the pmjjby basically it is to be 330 rupees and in the PMSBY, basically it is to be rupees 12 rupees clear it is to be rupees 12 and on your admit card basically the cutoff date line is to basically 31st of december 2021 clear 31st of december 2021 and on 24th of june sorry 24th of may i think not of june i think 24th of may basically they have revised this limit basically 330 to 436 and 12 to rupees 20 clear on 24th of may basically they have revised this premium because the renewable is basically on 30th of may sorry 31st and 30th of may clear renewable is basically 31st and 30th of may clear so before that they have enhanced the premium clear but for the examination point of view clear basically but for the examination point of view basically we have to remember these things clear 330 and 12 clear basically for the examination point of view basically we have to remember this one clear because in the examination basically they have to ask the data basically till 31st march 31st of december 2022 clear 31st of december 2021 clear so basically we have to remember according to that now move to the next one clear basically i have repeated this point again which next one is that is what is the full form of propagate clear what is the full form of 
propagate. So I want basically from all of you. Basically, this is a definitely one or two mark question in the examination. Clear? They will. You will definitely get question basically one, either one mark or two mark question. Clear? Basically from this. What is propagate? Clear? So please tell part. P stands for the product. R stands for the risk. O basically stands for the opportunities. Last year, basically, they have asked in one set, basically, what is O stands for? Easily, basically, I think you are able to answer the question. P stands for the people. Or in the examination, basically, they have asked, this is the word propagate. So what is the full meaning of fifth letter? Clear? What is the meaning of the fifth letter? Clear? Or basically, fifth letter A basically stands for. A here basically stands for appetite. G basically stands for geography. I request to all of you, please write this full form basically in your notebooks. Or you can take the snapshot of that clear or take the click. Very, very important for the examination point of view. Clear. G stands for the geography. A stands for the attribute. And T stands for the training. And E stands for the education. Clear. E stands for the education. Clear. Very, very important point for the examination point of view. So I request to all of you, please remember, clear, please remember these points. I have already discussed this point also, but I will discuss now once again more. This is the full form of the propagate now. Basically under the equity scheme, clear, basically under the equity scheme. Clear, basically classification. Basically, classification is basically three types clear in the equity scheme. Still, basically, shares are to be classified under three parts. Clear, basically, shares are to be classified. Basically, classification is of three parts, is under three parts. Clear, first one is the large cap, second one is the mid cap. Third one here is to be the small cap. Large cap, mid cap, and small cap. Clear? So large cap basically it means that first 200th company. Mid cap basically stands for first two, sorry, large cap stands for first 200th company. This point they have asked in the examination last year. Mid cap basically stands for 100 first to 101. This is 101 to 250th company. And smallest cap basically 250 first to company onwards. Clear basically in case in terms of full market capitalization. Clear basically in terms of full market capitalization. Clear. So basically they have to be divided in this way. Clear. They have to be divided in a, this way. Clear. So please remember all these points. Very, very important for the examination point of view. Clear. Basically these points are very, very important for the examination point of view. Okay. Now next one. Clear. Basically this is some of the important points under the chapter number 18. And I request to all of you, please go through the videos basically provided in the group and go through the slides also, clear? Go through the slides also, clear? Next one, basically in the morning, I have discussed with you, that is the liability of the customer. Clear? That is the liability of the customer. So example, basically that is market capitalization, clear? As per the market capitalization, clear? Which company has more market capitalization? That is basically depends in that range, clear? That is basically comes in that group clear next one is a basically liability of a customer liability of a customer basically in a respect of unauthorized transaction clear basically in a respect of unauthorized transactions clear liability of the customer basically in a respect of unauthorized transaction so basically under that further, basically we have to discuss regarding the limited liability. Whatever I am writing here, basically limited liability, basically they have already asked question on the basis of that in the examination, clear? Limited liability, clear? Here basically you will write type of the account. And here maximum 
liability. First one here is to be the BSBD account. So under the BSBD account, clear what is the maximum liability of the customer, clear? What is the maximum liability of the customer basically in the BSBD account, clear? Please tell fast basically in the maximum limited liability, clear under the limited liability. What is the maximum liability of the BSBD in the BSBD account basically of the customer that is rupees 5,000, clear? That is basically rupees 5,000. Second one, basically in all other SB accounts, clear in all other SB accounts. What is the liability? That is basically 10,000, clear in all other SB accounts, basically maximum liability that is 10,000, clear. Third one, basically in the current account, CC account, OD account of individuals, clear basically of whom? Basically of individuals with annual average balance clear basically with the annual average balance during the last one year basically it is to be last one year basically that is up to 25 lakh clear up to 25 lakh clear in that case also the limited liability basically it is to be 10,000 okay further it is basically up to 25 lakh if the amount is basically above 25 lakh clear if the amount is basically above 25 lakh then the liability in that case basically it is to be 25,000 clear. So then the liability basically in that case basically it is to be 25,000 clear. So please remember all these points clear. So please remember all these points so that you are able to answer all the questions in the examination clear. Basically these are very very important clear. These are the very very important points basically and these points basically you will find under the chapter number 11 clear. Basically under the chapter number 11. Basically, you will find all these points and these are very, very important for the examination point of view. Directly, basically, they will ask straightforward questions, clear? One or two more question, basically, from these points. Now, next is basically one thing, basically, I will tell you. These are basically regarding the chapter number 10. So, basically, definition, basically, it is given by which person? Clear, basically, definitions, basically, it is given by which person, that is, in the chapter number 10, basically, we have to discuss some important definitions, clear? First of all, basically, we have to discuss regarding the bank marketing, clear? Basically, bank marketing. Sir Frederick, clear? Basically, the definition which we will discuss now that is given by the Sir Frederick. Clear? One more question, basically, we will get from that and more chances that is basically we will get definition that is basically given by the Sir Frederick, Frederick clear? That is basically what they can say that basically the creation, the creation and delivery of customer, clear? The creation and delivery of customer satisfying, the creation and delivery of customer basically satisfying services, at a profit to the bank clear basically satisfying services basically at a profit to the bank clear at a profit to the bank this definition it is given by the sir frederick clear basically sir frederick clear now next thing basically which we have to discuss here under that what is marketing mix clear basically what is a marketing mix clear directly basically you will get question basically marketing mix refers to marketing mix refers to clear marketing mix basically refers to option number a is product and price option number b is basically promotion and place option number c here basically people peo people and process and physical evidence D option is all the above clear basically D option is all the above D option is basically all the above clear so in the market sorry in the marketing mix clear basically we have to discuss all the piece clear in the marketing mix basically we have to discuss all the piece and that basically how many total fees are there basically total fee fees basically in the 
नंबर बिस्टर इट इज टू बी टोटल सेवन पीस के फर्स्ट पी सेकेंड पी थर्ड पी फोर्थ पी फिफ्थ पी सिक्स पी एंड सेवन पी क्लियर सो यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दैट क्लियर सो मार्केटिंग मिक्स क्लियर सो मार्केटिंग बेस्टली रेफर्स टू द प्रोडक्ट एंड प्राइस प्रमोशन एंड प्लेस पीपल प्रोसेस एंड फिजिकल एविडेंस क्लियर पीपल प्रोसेस एंड फिजिकल एविडेंस क्लियर सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर ऑल दीज पॉइंट बेस्टली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू क्लियर दीज पॉइंट आर बेस्टली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके नाउ वन or two more things basically which we have to discuss in our today session that is also important for the examination point of view clear here i am discussing basically those points which are very very important clear which are very very important for the examination point of view clear now next basically which we have to discuss here is categories of ecs schemes clear basically categories of ECS schemes. Clear. First of all, can anyone tell basically what is the full form of ECS? Clear. What is the full form of ECS? Clear. ECS basically stands for the electronic clearing service. Clear. Basically, ECS basically stands for the electronic clearing service. Clear. Electronic clearing service. and basically ecs basically is to be divided into how many broad categories clear ecs basically can be divided into basically how many broad categories basically it is to be divided basically into three categories clear basically three broad categories clear ecs has to be divided basically into three broad categories clear so what are basically these three categories first one is a local ecs second one is to the regional ecs RECS that you are right should be third one is the NECS clear NECS that is national ECS clear first one here is to be the local EC ECS second one here is to be the regional ECS third one here is to be the national ECS clear national ECS and all these services are basically provided by which organization clear all these are services. All these services basically are provided by which organization? Basically, all these services are basically provided by the NPCI. Clear? Basically, NPCI. Clear? So, NPCI basically stands for the National Payment Corporation of India. Clear? Basically, NPCI basically stands for the National Corporation Payment of India. Clear? NPCI basically stands for the National Payment Corporation of India. Clear? And further one basically PSS Act. Clear? PSS Act basically enacted in which year? Clear PSS Act enacted basically in which year? PSS Act basically enacted in which year? Clear that is Payment and Settlement System Act. Clear basically Payment and Settlement System Act two thousand seven. Clear basically this act has to be enacted basically in the year two thousand seven. Clear so please remember all these points. Clear very very important for the examination point of view. and one another important point that i will share in the group clear basically in the already i have discussed in the video next important point i think we have not discussed regarding that this is also they have asked last year basically one mark question basically from that what is stand alone model this is the basically difference given and second one here is to be the centralized model clear second one here is to be the centralized model stand alone model and second one here is to be the centralized model clear so basically what is stand alone model clear stand alone model basically we can say that like branch level clear basically it is branch level process clear branch level processing clear and centralized model basically it means that retail loan processing centers clear retail loan processing center or basically we can say that special hubs are to be created clear or special offices are to be created clear basically for the loan loan processes clear basically for the loan process basically special hubs are to be 
created clear so basically in the branch level clear as basically customer especially visits the branch for all things so basically in that better understanding of the customer clear so under that basically better understanding of the customer clear basically better understanding of the customer and under the centralized model basically just basically we have to send the documents to our higher group clear or basically specialized group that is basically they can judge the customer basically based on documents only clear they can judge the bank customer basically based on documents only okay second one here is basically processing time here the processing time basically differ clear processing time basically may differ depend upon the branch work clear depend upon the branch work clear and here in that case basically processing time basically will be uniform clear processing time will be uniform and fixed tat basically for the different retail loans clear tat basically stand for the turn around time clear basically tat stands for the basically turn around time clear and basically fixed turn around time basically for the different retail loans clear and fixed turn around time basically for the different retail loans clear so basically this is the basic difference between the stand alone model and the centralized model clear stand alone model and the centralized model clear so in this session basically we have to discuss up to this much point and in the next session basically we have to discuss some other numerical based questions clear some another numerical based question so that basically you are able to understand basically what type of numerical basically they will ask in the examination clear basically they will ask in the examination so thanks to all of you basically for joining this session hope basically you are able to understand many new points in this session and i request to all of you please go through the session once again clear so that you are able to remember all this one very very important for the examination point of view so thanks to all of you for joining this session